Star Brianna. Hi, Mommy. Welcome. Hey, okay, the top doctor. Hey, Hi, everyone. Bye. It's Friday. Another Ask the Top Doctor live. Thank you so much for being here today, for joining us on this wonderful Friday. You know, they roll around so fast, so fast. don't they? We were just doing this the other day. I feel like it was just uh, 24 hours ago. But anywho, welcome to Ask the Top Doctor Live. Uh, I am your host, Dr. Dacia P. Hastings, and my beautiful co-host, who also happens to be my beautiful daughter, is Star Brianna. And, um, you know, I'm a psychotherapist, speaker, consultant, and life coach. Uh, and Star Brianna, who is my beautiful co-host, will introduce herself. Yes, so I am a content creator, and I help with marketing strategies um, for, you know, various people and mm -hmm. businesses yeah, yeah love it yeah she even does some work for me help me <laughs> out here you know and it's always great to have that kind of um, background and inspiration so creative star Brianna thank you for your creativity so what exactly is Axe the top doctor live well if you're new to our show um, we uh, created a platform um, as a place where people can just come and just be ask questions, whether anonymously send, sending them in prior to the broadcast or asking them here live on the show. It is important for people to have a space and a place, um, you know, to just process things that they're going through. And who knows, maybe you're on this platform today and a question that somebody else might ask that we might answer might resonate with you. And that's why we think that it's so imperative to create a safe space for people um, to be able to come and just kind of talk about things that they might be going through and get expert answers, yeah. um, you know, from a professional who can really be of value to you and really support your journey in whatever it is that you might be going through. Yeah, and while you mentioned that, um, as this is a space to just be, we want you to remember that we are human and we're still learning these technologies. So yeah. on that note, let me just fix the camera um, so that we're both in yeah. the view yeah um, so i love that you're here bit. to really help with that yeah. so if i didn't have star brianna i have no idea how all of this would be set up and set up properly because she's just so helpful in that regard so yeah so you know uh that's true mm -hmm. and thank you for bringing that up mm -hmm. so you know today our theme that we thought would be fitting um is depression hurts yeah. And we're going to be talking about that. But before we get into subject matter that might be otherwise heavy mm -hmm. for some people because depression does truly hurt, we want to start off with just kind of highlighting something good. Uh, in today's um, climate, we just feel like every time we turn on the news or every time you talk to someone else, it's just so much gloom and doom, so much news of just what happened now just seems like the world is in crisis unfortunately and we want this to also be a place where we lift you up so tell me something good tell me something good yes perfect um actually just a little less than an hour ago maybe an hour ago perfect thing um so our family is actually headed out to the slopes this weekend we're going to be doing some snowboarding Snow tipping, which I'm so excited about. I am too. Um, actually, just last night, I was just pondering, like, what boots will I wear? Like, I really don't have any, you know, boots that I can, you know, immerse myself in the in the snow in, you know. And then, lo and behold, um, maybe you guys don't know, but we are a blended family, and nevertheless. Antoine is my lovely stepfather, and if I can, I just want to dedicate this episode to him. Um, oh, I want to so. dedicate this episode to him. He is my stepdad, and he came to my room, and he handed me a boot, a pair of boots. I was so stunned. I gave him the biggest hug, but after he left my room, I was just stuck. Like, <laughs> I was just 
staring at the boots and just in my head and just it's so fitting that today's episode is depression hurts because um when you when you are depressed or you have some type of mental illness like you start to feel like you don't deserve certain things and so so many thoughts started going through my head and I'm that's all the things that I was that was having me stuck I was happy I was grateful I was like thank you wow I can't believe you just did this but it's also like I don't deserve this, you know, I don't, like, I didn't know what to, what to say, what to think, what to feel, so, that's my good news, you don't, you never know what, you know, kind of an impact just, you can do, just by giving something, some, something to somebody, it doesn't even have to be a material thing, just a compliment, just whatever's in your mind, just say it, just say something nice to somebody, because you really never know, and it really had me just on my knees, like surrendering, like, like everything that you guys will learn in this episode, but just the depression, the anxiety, the everything is not for you, but for somebody else. You know, sometimes you question certain things like, why is this happening to me? Why is this my life? But it's for other people. So it really just, so just thank you, Antoine, you know, so I, I, so many things went through my thoughts and I just appreciate you and I I appreciate those boots forever and you and thank you. Wow, what yeah. a beautiful thing. <laughs> that is really good. Yeah. Um yeah, that's so nice. That's yes. so nice for you to say that. I'm I'm sure if he's watching that that really warms his heart and mm -hmm. that he he um he knows you're grateful. Yeah, yeah he knows you're all you know, I mean, after that good thing, Maya, I, I don't even know if I have one to top that. No, nothing can top it, but let's hear yours. But my tell me something good in light of giving, um, Starbia just mentioned that it's important for us to give to other people, even if it's not material things. So maybe some of you don't know this, but we actually have a foundation. It's called the Talk Doctor and Friends Foundation. And um, one of the things that we were able to do um, in light of giving, um, every holiday season we have a giving event. Um, and unfortunately, because of the climate and you know the rise in COVID cases and all of that, we got started with our giving event a little too late. And I, I always feel like it's never too late to give. I mean, you don't have to just give around the Christmas season. Giving is an ongoing thing. And so we launched our campaign because it's called the Talk Doctor and Friends. Um, a lot of our um, donations come from friends like you um, who uh, believe in this cause, believe in our cause. Um, our mission is to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You may be praying for something and waiting for that something to appear. And it's the person that's next to you who essentially is the person that maybe God sent to fulfill that need. And that's exactly what we try to do in our foundation. Wherever there's a need, we're going to meet it. We're going to fill it as much as we possibly can. And so our foundation um, was able to um, be able to, through your giving efforts, um, you know, come up with these wonderful uh, bags to give to. We were assigned two families. Um, one is in a transitional uh, housing situation, going into um, a shelter living situation, and another family had to be taken into a safe house. And so because of that, um, we were asked to help this family. And I just want to thank all of the friends of the foundation who showed up and gave and gave generously. I, I wish I had them to show you, but we have these beautiful um, bags that for each child we stuffed with a lot of different things, things that they can use, uh, toys, and best of all, these warm, fluffy blankets and teddy bears. Yeah. When children are scared and uh, naturally going into a situation like a shelter can be very scary for a child, mm -hmm. think about what a warm blanket and a nice, warm, fuzzy teddy bear can symbolize for them. Yeah. And that's my something good, that I love you all, friends of the Talk Doctor, that donate to our cause, and you don't know what a tremendous thing that you're able to do for these children and families. So 
Just want to thank you so much for that. And I want us to remember that giving takes place on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Every day of our lives, we should be the hands and feet of Jesus yeah. and respond to other people's need. You never know whose life you're going to bless yeah. just by giving something or saying something, you know, to that person exactly. that can really resonate. Exactly. So that's my something good. I love that. Yeah, that's Thank my you. something good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing yours too. So let's get on with the theme for today. So again, we're talking about depression hurts. And you know, one of the things that I want to note, even though that this isn't um, depression awareness month or mental health awareness month, I think that conversations about mental health and mental illness should be on an ongoing basis sure. we have to dispel the myths mm -hmm. we have to really eradicate the stigma as it relates to people's mental health issues mm -hmm. and allowing people to know that even when they're not okay that's it's it is okay for you to say i'm not okay mm -hmm. and i think that this platform can be a fitting place for us to really uh, allow ourselves to share what we know mm -hmm. about depression and maybe something we say today might resonate with you that you can share with someone else. Um, I first want to start off, Star Brianna, by saying I am officially declaring this part past week mm -hmm. trauma week at my <laughs> practice. Okay. I kid you not. Mm -hmm. So you might be saying, well, if someone comes to see you naturally, they're having some sort of trauma. And that's not always true. Um, in my practice, there are times when people might come for various different reasons, not trauma related. They may need coaching for a certain situation that's acute or that's not clinically based. But this week, I kid you not. I kid you not trauma week and it was so heartbreaking for me as a professional to sit and listen to patient after patient just unload the trauma and just break down in these sessions because of the pain that they were in I particularly remember this young man which by the way shout out to the men who are going to therapy it's no longer a myth that men do not go to therapy or a stigma i should say men should and do seek help in that regard and even shout out to african-american men because there is you know this stigma associated with uh, african-americans seeking that kind of help but i'm so glad a lot of you are showing up now in record numbers and really processing the emotions that you're feeling and getting healthy mentally. So a 27 year old young man came and um, you know, just a whole lot of trauma. He's severely depressed. He talked about being depressed since he was a child. So imagine dealing with depression that long. And today in his life, he is just going through so much. Simple things like getting up to go to work is hard for him. Um, you know, going through the motions of you know, showing up in his family is hard for him. One thing in particular stuck out, uh, what, what he said to me, he said, you know, sometimes I'm in a place and I'm not there, you know, I'm physically there, but I'm gone mentally. Like, I don't even know what's going on. And again, because of his state of being, he even shared with me how one moment he could be smiling mm -hmm. and two minutes later, he's down in the dumps. And that's kind of what happens when people are experiencing, you know, severe depression, that they go through these, you know, shifting emotions. And sometimes it's hard for the people around you to understand. And that's essentially where we want to take this because mental illness is an umbrella term and we can go in so many different directions, but I want to focus in specifically today um, and take a few moments before we go into your question on how do I um, let somebody in my life know how to support me? 
Because I tell you, that's one of the hardest things. Mm -hmm. The people who have to watch you in so much pain mm -hmm. and have absolutely no idea what to do right. and worry if they're going to say the wrong things. Mm -hmm. So, Star Brianna, you're no stranger to being depressed. Yeah. And I think that that's something that you're okay with expressing to people because it doesn't mean that there is necessarily a character weakness or something wrong with you. It just is. Mm -hmm. And I am so glad that you are brave enough to talk about your battle with depression and how that has been for you. And you, one might say that, well, your mom is a therapist. That has nothing to do with anything. Um, and so we, we um, thought it would be a good idea to maybe dialogue, like what does that look like for you on a day-to-day -day basis to be in that kind of pain at times? Yeah. Um, I can totally relate with this 27-year-old client that you had. Um, specifically, let's just be completely honest and transparent. Here on the show, here right now, okay? I'm having brain fog. I'm experiencing, like how he said, sometimes you're there, but you're not really there. That's the same for me sometimes too on the show. Just last week's show was a bit tough for me. Today is a bit tough for me. It's like the moment when, okay, it's my turn to talk. I got to snap back into it. But as it's going on, I'm kind of elsewhere, you know, so I can relate to that. And it, it sucks because you want to focus. You want to be there. It's not like you don't. I mean, sometimes maybe you don't, but sometimes when you actually do, you want to be there. But it's so much stuff. Like, it's just constant. It's like it's on repeat 24-7. Mm -hmm. Not at times, all the time. You know, it's like it's like when you hear that sound of a chalkboard. Like, maybe you're not hearing that sound all the time. But it's that annoying just thing that just, it won't go away. It's like it just wants to cling to you 24-7. Yeah. And yeah. it hurts. You know, it, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Um, especially as you're getting older or all the time, no matter what age you are, it just, it's something that hurts. It hurts more than you can even express, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I imagine, yeah. you know, with the symptoms and for those of you who are not familiar with the symptoms of depression, I want to just spend um, a few quick seconds just talking about the feelings of helplessness, the feelings of hopelessness just kind of feeling like, you know, nothing matters. There's no, you know, there's no way out. This is not going to change, you know, you know, withdrawing from people, just feeling um, a sense of just being isolated. And one of the biggest telltale signs is even, you know, disinterest in things that you were once interested in, um, disinterest in friendships that were friendships that you once held there. And the list goes on. And the sad part about this um, is that unfortunately for some, they get to a place where they feel that there's no way out that they have thoughts of harming themselves. Mm -hmm. Harming yourself can look like, you know, self-inflicting pain by cutting, or it can be as, you know, profound or severe as really contemplating ending your life. And so when we say depression hurts, mm -hmm. it really does hurt. Mm -hmm. And I want Star Brianna to kind of tell us like, what helps mm -hmm. in terms of the people who are in your life, like what do you want them to know about what somebody who is depressed might need? Yeah. Because one of the biggest things is sometimes people don't always know when they're depressed how to communicate what they need. Mm -hmm. And then the people who are in your life are sometimes in pain as well because they want to be helpful mm -hmm. or they want to, you know, they want to say to you, man, I wish, like I said to you um, this past week, one of the things, you know, I'll disclose that I said to her was sometimes I wish I could love you past your pain. And that literally means for me that if I could just put my arms around her and make what she feels inside go away, that would be something that I would not hesitate to do. Yeah. But it, it becomes that kind of desperation where you really want the person to feel better, to be better, but this is a process. It's, a process. it's an ongoing daily process. And if you're not processing through, if you're not really taking the time to understand what that means to be able to live with depression, mm -hmm. to manage your symptoms, the people who are in your life can sometimes withdraw as well 
because it's hard for them. So we want to be supportive and really just outline some things or some tips mm -hmm. that if you have a child who's depressed or you have a spouse or a significant other who's dealing with depression, what are some of those things that you as the person in their lives can do mm -hmm. to help support them? Okay. Um, so I did write down some things, but before that, I want to just say, I want to hold on to what you just said about loving the person, you know, your, your, your loved one past their pain. Um, as Christians, we, we believe in Jesus. So I want to just say to break the kind of whatever it is so that the person helping you doesn't leave in pain also, because that's also, you also have to think about, you know, your loved one too. Everybody has feelings you know maybe they're not depressed but they also have feelings so to kind of break that hug them hold them and put your hand over their head you know or, or their heart and just pray just pray with them pray out loud or pray in your in in your soul but pray with them mm -hmm. so that god knows what you're trying to do and he can comfort you too because mm -hmm. you need the comfort too but when you're stepping into to a situation like this too because yeah. you can leave feeling heavier than you came and then maybe you're gonna end up depressed too and now we both how we both how we're gonna help each other well, you know we're both feeling that yeah, way. yeah so just pray just just break off whatever it is that mm -hmm. like you know the person has going on maybe you don't know but God knows and mm -hmm. God will put the words in your mouth or maybe you don't know what to say so just just Say it in your heart, like whatever it is, whatever God gives you to say, you know, yeah. I can't speak on that. God will give it to you. If you ask him, he will always give it to you. Yeah, um, that's a good point. So one of the things that I wrote down, though, um, so maybe this is someone you live with or, or maybe you don't live with them, but you see them on a day to day basis. This is your loved one. Um, and you ask them, you know, how are you? And they're just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm OK, you know. And that's always their response. Mm -hmm. And you know that they're not okay. Stop stopping at, yeah, I'm okay. You know, kind of dive. This is this is not just a friend or a colleague. Like, this is your family member. This is your, your child or your spouse or, or your cousin or whoever it is. This is somebody that is in your family, somebody that's close to you. So you can, you know, dive deeper into it. Mm -hmm. Kind of, um, you know, ask. So how, how do you ask? that you and and not feel like you know you're gonna say the wrong things to the person because sometimes there's that mm -hmm. and you want to ask them how they're doing or you want to ask them you want to dive deeper into the oh i'm okay but mm -hmm. you can see clearly on their face that they're not okay i say just do it mm -hmm. i say just do it you never know until you try that's you walking on eggshells because of maybe something that has happened in the past, you know, but you want this, you want this person to know I care about you. Mm -hmm. You want this person to know I see you and I know that you're not okay. Yeah. And I'm going to walk on the eggshells because I want you to be okay. Yeah, so move past that. Just ask it. Mm -hmm. Just ask. Yeah. And not in front of a bunch of people. Do it in a safe space. Yes. In always. a place when it's just maybe just you two there or even nice. if it's a third person this you guys are all a, a tight circle mm -hmm. you know it has to be like that it yeah. has to be intimate yeah. i definitely yeah. agree with that and especially um you know in workplace situations mm -hmm. um if you maybe it's your um employee that's going through a situation mm -hmm. or a coworker or something it, it should always be a safe space because remember that this is something this, this is, is a delicate, delicate. matter yeah. you know and you don't want it broadcast in front of you know people who should have that's not their business yeah. so definitely making a safe space to really talk to that person i agree yeah, yeah. what else you got um, how okay. how can how can we be helpful um, in terms of the person who is in pain yeah. and you want to support them? Okay, one other thing. Um, I I wrote down a couple of things, but to not um, you know take so much time. One thing I love. Um, you see the person walking around head down all the time. Maybe they've even got their mm -hmm. hood on all the time. They just. They're just in a funk, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's deep and it's heavy. And you feel the heaviness. You feel the thickness on them before you even start talking to them. It's like you yeah. walk and it just becomes 
thick. It's a lot of tension. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, just walk up to, don't be, and the, you cannot be afraid. That's what I mean about the eggshells. Like, you can't, you gotta just, you gotta keep, and it's gonna help you too. It's gonna help you too. But you gotta just, you gotta be there for this person. Just walk up to them, just gently, just raise them up, lift them up. Yeah. You're literally lifting them up. Take them by the chin and lift their chin. Yeah. Like, look up. Yeah. You are a king. You are a queen. Look up. You're yeah. more than that. You know, yeah. you are God's child. God right. didn't give you the spirit. That's you right. know? That's right. Yeah. Literally. I, I think that that's symbolic. Yeah. And I like how you say, you know, lifting the person up. Mm -hmm. So you can lift people up with positive words mm -hmm. and words of encouragement. But unfortunately, somebody who is dealing with depression may not always hear it or hear it in the moment. Say it nevertheless. Mm -hmm. But the physical the action, aspect yeah. of actually just taking the person, yeah. looking them in the eye, mm -hmm. and just picking that chin up yeah. to let them know, until you can do it for yourself, mm -hmm. I'm here to help you. Yeah. One of the things that, that really struck me when you were saying just kind of lift the person up or even the aspect of, you know, how you put your head down, you put your hood. I literally had a teenager who I counseled and, you know, she was like that. Every time she came to her session, she would have her hoodie on and her head would be in her lap. So imagine what that was like to get through a counseling session with somebody because depression hurts. Mm -hmm. And as a professional, I know that. Mm -hmm. So if, if she's here in the chair, yeah. that means something, that yeah. she is there for a reason, even if her head is hung low. Yeah. And I remember asking her one time because it, it really got to be so much, so heavy mm -hmm. to always see her in that state. And I said, tell me what your depression feels like. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget what she said to me. She said, when everybody else sees the world in color, mm -hmm. all I see is gray. Mm -hmm. How profound, how profound. So that was the description of her depression. So if I'm seeing just gray, what's the point? Who wants to look around on a gray day? Mm -hmm. And it really resonated with me, and that's why I love this work so much, because my patients teach me so much um, about the practicality of life and what that might look like. And it allowed me to better, better guide her, knowing that that's what she felt like. So it really resonated when you said, you know, just kind of lift the chin up and just encourage the person. And so these are practical things that you can do you know, as somebody who is standing on the sidelines in this person's life, just watching them go through this pain. Yeah. And it may be painful for you yourself as well. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. It. I love it too. I really love that you, you know, just wanted to share this mm -hmm. and, you know, wanted to let people know that this is something that you can overcome. I really want to emphasize that although you may live with depression, it's a completely treatable illness, mm -hmm. but you have to get the help that you need. Help looks different for different people. Whether you have a multidisciplinary team around you of therapists, psychiatrists, uh, healthcare providers, um, and your supports, or whether you're someone who is self-help and you do things like med meditation, yoga, exercise, you know, trying to manage your stress daily, even eating the right foods. Yes. And I think one day we need to dedicate one of these to nutrition and how important that is for brain health, yes. because there are a combination of ways that you can get help, but do get help. Mm -hmm. It is necessary for you to manage your life and show up much better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love that when she's up, she's up. Mm -hmm. And when she's not feeling well, she's okay with communicating. Mm -hmm. It's not a good day. Mm -hmm. It's not a good day for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's important to really, you know, get to that point. I mean, trust me, I, I understand if you feel like you, you're never going to get to that point, but you, it, it is important to communicate with yeah. the people around you. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not okay. Even if that's just how you say, and you say it in the funkiest way, just say it. Like, I, 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 I can't today, I you can't know? Today. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Like, it's just too much going on. Mm -hmm. um, but just that.
communication is important yeah and, and it will help yeah so, so I so I hope this little you know spiel on this you know I wish we could take more time to kind of go into more but mm -hmm. we thought that it would be very important to just kind of help you support those you love mm -hmm. who are experiencing depression and any other mental health issue for that matter yeah. so um, these were great thank you so much star Brianna for giving us some insight into what that might feel like and what can help um, at times so why are we here well we're here to answer your questions because this is ask the talk doctor live yeah. so if you have them you know put them in the chat we hope that you will um but we have some pre questions as always that comes in and we want to be able to take one or two of those uh while we're here so uh you want to read the first one star brianna okay so this one is my teenage daughter doesn't get that i'm human and i need to date she makes it hard for me to have company over and makes things very uncomfortable for me. What should I do? Hmm. That's a good one. So you answer so, this one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I was thinking to myself, should I give the Steve Harvey answer or should I give the, uh, you know, the, the practical answer Let's here? Both. Yeah, both. I think I think if, 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 if this was a question posed to Steve Harvey, he would say, who's the parent? <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to take that route because naturally you got to kind of look at the fact that this um teenager is probably dealing with some issues of her own you know for that matter we're talking about mental health and what is it that is so that makes her feel so insecure now that her mom wants to date and so obviously they live in a household together they have to share a space she's a teenager watching her mom dating and is probably putting up some roadblocks because for all intents and purposes, who's this? Why are you here? And are you going to take my mom away? Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 I feel for both of them. On one hand, I think that the mom really um, should take some time to have a conversation with her teenage daughter about what does it mean to you that I'm now dating so she can gain some insight into what the child might be struggling with mm -hmm. to see her mom dating because you don't want to fight against that because of course you're going to drive everybody away that comes into her life because this teenage daughter is putting up roadblocks yeah. so you do want to sit down and have a conversation and help her to understand that even though i'm dating it doesn't take away from my role in your life and the relationship that i still will have for you there's room in my heart you know for you and to also expand to seek love for myself because for all intents purposes she is human yeah. and you know all human beings thrive on relationships yeah. so that's the short answer mm -hmm. i definitely think that the two of them need some time to really dialogue and talk about and also talk about boundaries mm -hmm. because yes she is the parent and that child also needs to understand that you know you have to respect the parent the person as the parent as well the decisions that they're making as long as they're not harming you as long as they're not doing these things to kind of create you know more stress for you mm -hmm. that it there's going to have to be a balance here yeah definitely have yeah to be balanced. definitely yeah. yeah what do you think um i'd agree with what you said um i guess i'll speak from the role of the teenage daughter since i've never you know been married or in a relationship and even have a child of my own um so i'll have to speak from the teenage daughter definitely having that conversation is necessary it is important and you must um because the child obviously like you said is experiencing his or her own pain you know they're used to a life and now the life has changed yeah and that hurts mm -hmm. you know so i think that you hit every other nail in the head your mom or dad deserves to be in love and to have a relationship and to expand their life and it shouldn't stop just because you know the relationship with your um parents didn't work out you know mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. deserve love and right. and they must have love you know mm -hmm. but you should also you know um be comforting to your child as well and yeah. then you yeah. know 
it's an ongoing process it and is. you guys all have to come together including you know the the new person in your mom or dad's yeah. life when it's guys, time to yeah. introduce or yeah. to bring those people in yes yeah. most definitely i do agree with you mm -hmm. yeah thanks for that question mm -hmm. thanks for asking that i hope it works out for you all mm -hmm. so i'll read the next one the next one says um how can I balance constantly having my young children at home due to COVID school closures and the demands of a busy work uh, schedule? I am really overwhelmed and stressed. So this might resonate with a whole lot of you because all around the country, we're all dealing with this, unfortunately, that when there's an outbreak, you know, the schools close and then the kids are schooled from home and parents have to work from home and the demands and the stress and everybody's overwhelmed and for all intents purposes this is two years old mm -hmm. and people are like all right already mm -hmm. and you know maybe we haven't gone down to the days of lockdown but certainly this can happen in cycles where one week your kids might be in person next week they're back home and it's hard mm -hmm. you know to really get a rhythm going mm -hmm. and i myself is dealing this as well so I can understand how this parent might feel stressed and overwhelmed but there are a couple of things that I would say the first really that is key here is organization yeah. it's gonna minimize the feelings of stress and being overwhelmed the more organized you are and the more children you have the more organized you really need to be yeah. so when I say organization we all have to have a space that's our own mm -hmm. We, you know, you have to designate spaces where these children are going to work, whether it's a week or two weeks that they're going to be home and everything needs to be set up possibly the night before so that you're not scrambling the next morning, especially starting, you know, back work and, you know, you don't have a plan for your children. Mm -hmm. um, I think conversations are helpful, especially for older children. You've got to sit them down and let them know what the boundaries are, mm -hmm. that even though we're all at home, we are still have a responsibility to do our schoolwork. I still have a responsibility to do my work. When my uh, office door is closed, that means that I'm in a meeting. You are not to interrupt unless the house is burning down or something to that <laughs> yeah. effect. But really having these conversation is going to reduce and minimize the stress and the feelings of being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to check in with your children as often as possible mm -hmm. and check in with yourself. Yeah. Check your emotions. Check how you're feeling. If you need to stop, pause, decompress for five minutes before going to that next meeting, mm -hmm. do so. Because in the midst of juggling all of this, there needs to be a balance of taking care of yourself and each other as well. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, I wish I could tell you that this is going to end next week or next month. We don't know. So the key here is to get into a good rhythm of being organized, identifying what needs to happen as it relates to schedules, mm -hmm. understanding your schedule, their schedule, and oh, don't forget to communicate with the people at work. Mm -hmm. If you are someone who knows that you have smaller children at home, you've got to let people know. Not letting them know is going to create even more anxiety because yes, yeah. you're thinking that they have an expectation of you. You need to be a certain place, but your child is screaming and having a meltdown mm -hmm. because they need your help. Yeah. You got to communicate and you got to be open. People understand communication. Mm -hmm. And so be organized, communicate, balance, and taking care of yourself. Yeah. That's the best I love all advice I can give. I love the organization. I love the communication. One other word that is involving all of those is to have a routine. Yes. So one routine for when you know school is closed down and we're going to be home and one routine for when we're going to school i like it you know yes I so like you it. know it's structured in yep. that way so yep. we can still get our stuff done yep. and yep. things can still function accordingly absolutely so yeah. we know when to make the shift yeah um you know when things have shifted mm -hmm. and we can make the shift and i think having these ongoing conversations is going to make things a lot less overwhelming mm -hmm. and you know for the child and for for you for that matter yeah. that we are all on the same same page here yeah. so yeah great I love it you think we have time for one more what are we doing with time anybody posted anything in our um, 
question box yet. I'm wondering if people have come on and posted their questions. I don't see anything. Yeah. Um, but I think that, how are we doing with time? Yeah, yeah I think little, that we're a little bit over, over here. Yeah. And I, did you, did you want to no. add something? Uh -huh. I know that we don't want to dedicate, um, you know, too much more time um, to, you know, or take up too much more of your time here for that matter. But I did want us to wrap up kind of what we talked about today mm -hmm. in terms of supports. And um, I, I want um, us to really kind of talk about some of those resources that can be helpful to you um, before we kind of give our closing. So some national helpful resources, as we know that this platform is extended um, to those all across the nation um, and maybe all across the world for that matter, but some national um, things that you can reach out to um, is SAMHSA, uh, so that's SAMHSA.org, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, and their hotline number to reach them is 1-800-622-HELP. That's 1-800-622-4357. And they are very helpful in locating all kinds of mental health resources for you. Um, also utilize the National Suicide Prevention Hotline because where there's smoke, there's fire. And sometimes at times, unfortunately, people go through having these thoughts of suicide when they're dealing with depression and other mental health issues. And so the lifeline can be really helpful. They never close. Um, and that supportive number is 1-800-273-8255. And those of you who um, are in a situation where you are trying to help your loved ones, don't just give them the resource. Sometimes you have to actually be there with them and say, hey, do you want me to dial the number for you? Or hey, can I just sit with you while you go through this? Your presence really does make a difference and lets that person know that they're supported. Yeah. And finally, NAMI is a really good one, the National Alliance on Mental Health. Mm -hmm. And um, their phone number for NAMI um, is, is um, let's see what that is here. NAMI's helpline is 800-950-NAMI. So 800-950-6264. And we'll try to put these up on the platform yes. later so that you guys can um, have these at your fingertips mm -hmm. uh, to be able to access when needed. But I thought that it's very important for us to offer these resources. Yeah, it is important. It yeah. is important. So what did you want to say in closing? Um, in closing, just to wrap up this conversation that we were having, um, own your triggers, you know? Mm. Depression can be and is very triggering um, and it's also very strategic. Um, so knowing that it's strategically set up um, to keep you down, once you can get ahead of it, you'll be unstoppable. So the people, it's how it's strategic with the people in your life, the people that are not even in your daily circle. So these are the people that you just go, you're just going grocery shopping and then something you see just triggers you. Knowing you're triggered before you leave your home and then you go out into the world, you already, you already know it's coming. You're prepared for it. Yeah. So, you know, okay. your, your mindset is like better able to like carry mm -hmm. on, you know, whatever it is that you need to do in your day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you'll be, you'll be more at peace as you yeah. continuously like, you know, learn your triggers and own them and accept them and work through them. Um, and you know, I love you'll that. be able to move forward you know yeah. with your life i love that yeah i think what you're speaking to is the idea of management yeah. and one key strategy here is to know your triggers mm -hmm. and manage your triggers and kind of feel yourself with how i'm going to handle certain situations mm -hmm. before you actually face them so yeah. i love that you shared that that's mm -hmm. very good that's very powerful so i hope that was helpful so our, my closing remarks and actually um, my quote to, to leave you with is really about power and control. Um, I read somewhere that resonated with me and I wanted to share it with you that meekness and gentleness are not weaknesses, mm -hmm. but power under control. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you think it's hip to be the loudest person in the room, mm -hmm. to be seen before you're heard, or even to bully your way to the top. Mm -hmm. But the Bible clearly states that the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. What that means is those that feel like they never have a voice 
or are often the last to have a say, mm -hmm. or maybe you're the one who just simply is too afraid to speak your piece because all of the big people in the room. Remember this, your meekness is powerful silence. Mm -hmm. And he who made you is always fighting for you. I love that. So be well, mm -hmm. be blessed, mm -hmm. and we'll see you next week on Ask the Top Doctor Live. Thank you so much for being here. We love you, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.